The rainbow jersey, alongside the Mayo Jean, the most prestigious and iconic of all of the jerseys awarded in cycling. Oh, aside from the British Road Champions jersey as well. Oh, it seems like it was yesterday. Yeah, win this Garmin and you're a world champion, not just for one year, but for life. Just like being a British champion, really. But anyway, what do we really know about the World Championships? Let me and Dan take you on a spin with the Musette bulging with World Championship factoids, nuggets, gems and stats. Let's go back in time. Wow, how far are we going? 1892. You still remember that? Anyway, it was Chicago and the place and the destination for the first ever World Cycling Championships, but it was held only on the track. But to fast forward to 1921, for the first ever World Road Championships, but that was only held open to male amateurs. So we have to go to 1927 to find the first ever professional World Championships. And that was held at the Nürburgring in Germany and was won by Italy's Alfredo Binder, who was the first ever rider to pull on the coveted rainbow stripes. And then went on to have a successful career making some of the finest toe straps in the world. Well, that's a good start, Matt. But what about the women? Go on. Well, they had to wait until 1958 for their first ever UCI Road Championships. Now, that one was won by Elsie Jacobs in Rheims, in France, or, or Reims, yeah. Uh, she took the title there. Unfortunately, she did pass away back in 2008, but since that time, she's had a UCI Women's Road Race every year in her honour, and she's also got the sports centre in her hometown of Garnich, named after her, Garnich. And the bike that she won the Worlds on is in the museum in the town as well. Oh, wow. Well. Stats. Does that mean that was half your stat? Uh, I don't know actually. Uh, I just nicked a bit on the end, just bolted yeah. it off. It's like a bolt that on. Was a bit unfair. Sorry. <laughs> well, quality knowledge there, Dan. But keeping it with the ladies, do you know who the most successful woman is ever mm. at the road worlds? No, I do know the most successful nation in that particular category because that was France. They've had a total of 10 wins over the years. You've been, I know my stuff. You've been swatting up, haven't you, for this? Well, you're right, that is in fact the case, but the most successful lady is controversial French woman, Jenny Longo, who won the road championships on five occasions, and in addition to that, had another three visits to the podium. Wow. Right, my next fact means that we're moving on to the TT, or time trial, and did you know that the first ever time trial world championships didn't actually take place, the individual one, until 1994? I mean, I was even alive then. Anyway, it was the Brit Chris Boardman who scorched around the streets of Agrigento. Or Agrigento. Agrigento, yeah, in Sicily, in Italy, thus donning the newly minted rainbow jersey. Newly minted? Yeah, well, it actually had this picture of a stopwatch, controversially, right in the middle of the bands, thus separating the rainbow. Cripes, I remember it well. Why didn't you have that as your fact then? Just thought I'd give you a free one. Cheers. Sticking down with the dark art of the Contra La Montre, or the Chrono, as the Europeans say. Who do you think has nabbed the most wins? What, on the men's and women's side? Yeah. I think I've probably got this. So on the men's side, I would imagine it's probably Fabian Cancellara, the Swiss rider, because he won it in 2006, 2007, then again in 2009 and 2010. And on the women's side, it must be Jenny Longo again, who you mentioned before with the row. She's done it on time trials as well. She did it 95, 96, 97 and then again four years later in 2001. So four each, that's probably the record. You stopped nicking my facts. You just asked me. Anyway, uh, on to my next one. So let's go back to basics, the actual rainbow jersey itself. Do you know how that came about? I, I do actually. It was first awarded to Alfredo Binder in 1927 and the rings or the bands represent the five colors of the Olympic rings. So yellow, green, red, black, and blue. Now, although remarkably prestigious and an honour to carry, it did come with it an inordinate amount of pressure which often manifested itself in something that's become known as the curse of the rainbow jersey. Yeah, you haven't just so much as stolen my fact there, you just hijacked the whole thing. But you, you are right, I mean, Tom Simpson, the winter of the year that he won the World Championships, he broke his leg in a skiing accident. Of course, the worst for Tommy was still to come. Yeah, and Jean-Pierre Monser, a Frenchman in 1971, was actually killed whilst racing in the jersey. And then fast forward to 1987, or the following season, 88, Stephen Roach, whole season wiped out with a knee injury. Should we leave? Maybe we should yeah. leave that should one. Yeah, should we just we yeah. cut, let's cut this now. Curse the rainbow jersey. That's horrible. I know. The world's does have its bright side too though, Dan. After all, it is a rainbow. 
Yeah, rainbows that come out when it's raining. And when it's sunny. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, I guess there have been a few riders that have done pretty well with that rainbow jersey on their back. So let's try and think of a couple of examples. Uh, so Mark Cavendish, yep. he won the Worlds in Copenhagen in 2011. The following year, he was with Team Sky, and he won, I think, 15 races in that rainbow jersey, including three stages of the Tour de France. Fantastic. Well, talking of the Tour de France, Eddie Merckx, Bernard Hino, and his best mate, Greg LeMond, the American, of course, all won the Tour de France whilst in the rainbow bands. How cool is that? Yeah, I think they were the only three ever to do that. Indeed they were. And are. another rider who really enjoyed his year as well, Chami, was the Belgian Tom Bone. He won it 10 years ago in Madrid. And the following season, he took 20 victories. 20 he was wins. loving it. I tell, you what, it. I tell you what though, Dan, the world isn't without its controversy. Oh, mate, you do not need to tell me that. Do you not remember 2009? What happened in 2009? Well, I was there, Mendricio, in Switzerland, and I was on for a medal yeah. before I pulled out. What happened? I was just knackered, mate. I just couldn't keep up. Annoying. Well, that glaring injustice aside, hmm. take yourself back to Belgium, 1988 and Rance. I was in primary school then. I remember that well. Well, stop knackering the narrative. Sorry. Anyway, finishing straight, 200 metres to go. Steve Bauer sprinting for a win. Claude Cucrillion, the local Belgian hero, already world champion back in 1984, tries to come up the inside. Bauer shuts the door. Cucrillion crashes. And then the Italian, Maurizio Fondrius, nips through to take the title. Blimey Chaos in shoes. I remember it well. And that was not where the story ended, actually, because yeah. Cucrillion actually tried to sue Bauer. So he tried to sue him for assault, firstly, but also for one and a half million dollars, which in those days was a hell of a lot of money. Now, as you might expect, that case rumbled on for quite some time, three years to be exact, before, get this, what? Rekelion lost. Right, although the world is called the world, mm -hmm. the world has actually taken place inside Europe far more than the rest of the world. That's right. I know. Well, the first time the world actually took place somewhere else in the world, yeah. apart from Europe, was in 1974, Montreal in Canada. And since then, the world has become more worldsy with the mondialization of the world. And in fact, on eight separate occasions since 1974, the world has started somewhere else in the world. And finished. Now, yeah. I can better that. Really? Yeah, this year, Richmond in the US. Okay. Next year, Doha in Qatar. Yeah. So that's like a double whammy world championships factoid all rolled into one. Wow! Because not only is that the first time ever that two consecutive world championships have taken place outside of Europe, yep. but next year, that's the first time that the world championships will have taken place in the Middle East. That is actually pretty cool. Yeah. But it's warm there. I know. I mean, very warm. And flat. Right. Well, anyway, talking about countries, because mm. the world is always about countries. So what is the country in the world that's the best in the world at the world in the men's? So the best country in the world at the world. Yeah. That's Belgium. Yeah, it is. 26 gold medals, 48 medals in total, and Rick van Steenbergen, mm. the best Belgian of all the Belgians. It's not Eddie Merckx. No. Three golds and a bronze. Eddie, only three golds. Wow. Was that five each then? Are we done? I think that's I think they were loads pretty of free, good. Loads of freebies in it. But yours yeah. are good, mate. Yeah, I think that's some of yours. Thanks very much. Well, anyway, if you haven't seen yet our World Championships preview for this year in Richmond in the US, you can find that by clicking just up there. And for our new show, yeah. click just down there. And to subscribe to GCN, all you've got to do is click on the world. Click on the world. It's free. And it's, well, there's no rainbow, but it's, it's the world, isn't it? No. Thanks for watching. I'm exhausted. All those facts, nuggets, yeah. gems, factoids. Well done, mate. Knackered. Well done, bud.